In this video, I'm going to show you how I make YouTube videos. I shoot videos here in my home studio as well as on location somewhere else in the world. The equipment I use to make YouTube videos. The Sony Nex 5R. The one I'm holding is the 5N and the one that I'm shooting with is the 5R. The difference between the two, the 5R is a little bit more advanced and the screen also flips all the way up so I can see myself if I'm doing a selfie style video. This camera is fantastic. I've been using it for a couple of years now and I love how small it is. It's very easy to travel with. The quality is fantastic. It's a mirrorless camera and it has an interchangeable lens. The built-in mic in this camera is actually really good, but I do prefer to use an external mic, this little boom mic that I've gotten from Sony, which I can't find at the moment. I know it will turn up, but I just don't have it right now. I use this external light when I'm shooting in dark places or in dark rooms or even maybe a cave. I got this light from Sony about seven years ago and I use it quite often. For action shots, underwater shots, shots like when I was hang gliding in Puerto Rico, I use a GoPro. I have the Hero 2, which is an older version, but it works pretty good. It looks pretty good. Then I use this handy cam, mostly for doing daily vlogs. Uh, it's very easy to use. It's small as well. I can fit it in my pocket if I have a big pocket. And I really think it's super cool because it has a projector that's built into it. So that has been a big fan with my friends. So if we're filming for the day and I want to show them a clip, I can project it on a building or whatever and we can watch it together. It's pretty cool. I also use headphones all the time when I'm editing, whether it's on location or just at home. It allows me to hear, hear the video and hear the audio in the different levels more accurately. The ones I have are the Sony MDR-10R series, which are the noise-canceling headphones. They are fantastic. They are excellent, they are light, they are easy to pack away, and they are great quality. An external hard drive for anyone who's making videos is a must. If you do not want your computer to crash or be just very, very slow, then you will want an external hard drive to put all of the videos that you have done, as well as all of your footage on. I also like to back everything up when I travel especially, because if anything happens to my computer, whether it's stolen or it crashes, at least I have a backup of all my footage. This guy is pretty cool. It is a lens attachment that is from Photo Jojo. It's actually called the Super Secret Spy Lens and because it, it does make you feel like a spy when you're using it. So with this lens, it has a precision mirror assembled inside. So basically, you can shoot left, right, up and down, and it still appears that you're shooting straight ahead. Multiple SD cards are also a must, especially if you are traveling and making videos. The worst thing is to be filming something and all of a sudden you have run out of card space. Then of course a tripod. I use it all the time when I'm shooting in studio. I don't use it as frequently when I'm shooting abroad. I like to go handheld, but a tripod is a must for anybody shooting video. I use a Mac computer. I started using a Mac for the first time a few years ago. And as they say, once you go Mac, you don't go back. And this is a glide cam, which I am still learning how to use, but it's super fun. And then there's the Gorilla Pod, which is a tripod, a smaller tripod, which you can actually wrap the legs around different objects, like a tree, for example, or an arm. The great thing about all of this stuff is it fits in my backpack, which is considered my purse on flights. The only thing that doesn't fit is the glider, which I put in my carry-on luggage. And now to show you my at-home studio. You are currently in my home studio, so I will take you on a little tour and explain it a bit. Here we have the blue screen slash green screen, depending on what I want to wear that day. It's blue on one side. Here, I'll take you back a bit. Blue on one side, green on the other, and then I have a red background for some other videos I'm making right now. I also use the white wall. This is what the current setup looks like for this video. I've got my two lights here in my tripod. This is where I sit. This is my crazy artwork. Over here are some books, film books and videos and travel books and some gear. There's my globe. Yes, this is what it looks like. Then I have a closet full of different costumes and clothing that I've gotten in other countries that I use in some of my skits. 
and yeah. I got my lights in my green screen slash blue screen from Tube Tape, so I got it online, and I believe that the two lights with the green screen cost me under $300, which is really good. I got it a few years ago. But yeah, ordered it right online and it came within a week or two, I believe, right to my door. Once I have all of my footage, I import it to Final Cut Pro right off the SD card. Along with using Final Cut, I have used iMovie and I've used Adobe, Adobe Premiere. Uh, both are great as well. I just prefer Final Cut. And it's what I know best and it gives you a lot more options than the other two. If you are just starting out, I would highly suggest iMovie if you have a Mac computer. It does all the basic stuff that you need for cutting together a video. If you haven't used Final Cut before, or maybe you have a couple of times and before purchasing it because it is a big investment, you can uh, try the trial version for 30 days and just get a feel for it, play around with it, see if you like it. And you can get it on, uh, I'll put the link actually in the description box below where you can get the 30 day trial. The music I use for my videos is provided by the network I'm with, full screen. So there's a, I have access to two different types of audio libraries with tons of selection, which is incredible. Before I became part of a YouTube network, I was using Audio Jungle to purchase a lot of my music. It can be a bit pricey. You can get music bundles, which is like six tracks you get uh, for a discounted price. There are websites where you can get royalty-free music for free and sound effects. You just type in Google royalty-free music and a bunch of websites will pop up. But the only thing with that is the selection isn't as large. And you also have to really dig for the good stuff. Once my video is complete, I go through it to make sure it looks good and then I export it to my computer. Once that is done, I upload it to YouTube. I throw in a video description along with my links to other pages and my website. I type in all the keywords that relate to the video, the more the better. Then I will transcribe my video since I do have viewers that don't speak English as their first language or are hearing impaired. It's also really good for SEO. Once it's uploaded, I share it on all my platforms, including my website. And that is my process for making YouTube videos. Of course, shooting at home versus shooting on location, timing will vary for how long it takes me to shoot a video in studio. It takes me maybe a couple of hours up to a day, whereas if I'm on location, I'm, I'm going around for maybe a week collecting different footage of different activities that I'm doing and then putting it together. And then that takes me about a day to go through all the footage and then edit a video together. As for daily vlogs, it takes a day and a couple hours to edit. I hope you found this video helpful. I know quite a few of you asked me how I make YouTube videos and what equipment I use, so of course, Everything I do, I do it for you. Until next time, travelers, happy adventures. <laughs> that works. It works. I've put all of the links to all of the products and websites mentioned in this video in the description box below, so be sure to check it out if you're interested.